ASP here. I'm Chris and this is Joe, of course. And we're back with more Marine Corps uniforms, equipment, and belongings during World War II. So, Joe, what do we have here today? Okay, technically, not the Marine Corps, the United States Navy. Oh, Navy? Uh, Navy Corpsman, the naval department of the medic, mm -hmm. who in the Army. And Marine Corps, in Navy, it's a corpsman. And his job was to help with the Marine. Um, every platoon had a corner, passionately known by the Marines as Doc. Mm -hmm. And they, they, well, we're show you some of the specific gear issued to them. All right. Now, we see the herringbone twill jacket. There's no difference between this jacket and a Marine Corps contracted one, except for two major things. The USN on the pocket, instead of the USN CD and the anchor, anchor. And the buttons are have a different design on them. It does not say US Marine Corps, it simply has a star with a wreath. Okay. Other than that, they're HPTs. So they're basically the same thing oh, except yeah. the, exact same the name design, and the button. The, the pocket stamp and the button are different. Same thing with the pants. Same thing. HBT trousers. All right, we recognize them as same thing. This is a on, on, on this one. The same button fly, but the button has this star with, this, with the wreath. And we look at the back pocket, and we see USM. That's it. Now, in combat photographs, you know, 70, 75, like, the black and white photographs, it's almost impossible to pick them out. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that his uniform might be slightly different. And as time goes by, a corpsman serving with a Marine platoon is going to end up in Marine uniform eventually. Yeah. You know, he might have gotten them with, off the ship initially, and he had his. But we can't say that that was the only way. You know what I mean? Um, steel pot helmet, no different than anybody else's steel pot. But uh, like we showed in an earlier video, there's the designation for the mid-war mid helmets. An early war helmet would have been the big red cross. Mm -hmm. A fighting Japanese who did not sign the Geneva Convention, they used those bright red helmets as a naming point. Yeah, as a target. Yeah. As a target, absolutely. So this so, right here, this right here, if you see this on this type of helmet, that means it's... Navy, or what we refer to as sailors in forest green. Sailors were served for a ship, mm -hmm. and they were white, so they're blues. But some sailors serve as support troops in the Marine Corps, or the Army, and they would be distinguished by white discs. And sometimes on the uniform as well. Mm -hmm. Pretty much to the Gilbert Island, when we see lots of photographs of it, the Marshall Islands, so the Central Island, the Central Pacific campaigns. These are Gilbert Islands, the Marshall Islands, and slightly through the Marianas, but by then they were gone again. But it was an experiment they, they uh, had, dealt, had tried, and this is one of those helmets. So this would be, you know, Navy Corpsman's helmet. You know that by the white disc. The white disc. I would say that's about what two and a half inches around. Uh, yeah, right, three, maybe three. That's All right, I've never, yeah. never measured it, but yeah. two and a half inches. All right. For early, early, sort of pre-war Pearl Harbor time, this was the Navy Corpsman's medical bag. Short-lived. Once the war really got rolling, they were gone. Basically, because they're too small. It's a good bag. This was real nice and stencil with the sailor's name and rank on it. We'll show it later in better detail. It's just a bag. You can wear it. it had a totally adjustable shoulder strap. It had loops on the back. You can wear it through a belt. If you want to wear it on the hip, put your pistol belt through it. And it just had two snaps on the sides. Red Cross on the front, U.S. Senate Cross on the front. And that was it. We're going to be showing the contents of the yeah, bag. Yeah, contents will show later. See, now you can't get much in there. Now there is color film footage of Naval Beach Battalion Corpsmen with this bag on the Eugene, which is very late in the war. Yeah. But that's not the corpsman who went out in the jungle with the with the right. You know what I mean? And uh, we'll show them the next pack. Alright. So again, it was just a little too small. Short lived it was more for uh, Sailors who served the board, corpsmen who served the board ship, mm -hmm. could do their rounds in a bag like this. But the combat in the jungle, you need a bigger bag. They need better, better. Yeah, yeah. The color was bad. The red cloth was bad. It didn't work. Well. Okay. Now we're going to show the next. All right. Okay. Now this is the more popular and the most widely issued corpsman bag. They're known as the Unit Three bags. That's kind of why. It's a marked Unit Three, and there's a left. And is a right, mark L and R. 
Okay, and this was known as a yoke type suspender system. Okay, um, not specific for the corn. An army medic's bags, which are different, have the same harness. Okay, right. That's you know, a little thing. This was a strap to hold them together up front. Um, you don't see a lot of photographs of guys with two. This was just one. I'm guessing it was too heavy to put it. And if you look, in a black and white photograph, for example, of Marine combat troops and their corpsmen with them, these bags sort of blend in a lot better with the rest of their gear, don't they? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that was a big part of the purpose. And the bags were a lot bigger. And if you look close, and we'll show it better later, they could be folded up to a smaller design. This is the same bag. But it could be... It could be it could you be, simply uh, fold it up, snap it in, okay. and it was a smaller bag. All right. All right. We'll show it back. You have the harness, a nice harness, very comfortable. Um, I've seen photographs of BA Armin and your big heavy BA belts. Yes, absolutely. Okay. If they could acquire themselves a good set of yokes, you know, Corman yokes, instead of the thin Marine Corps suspenders were sucked. I have several photographs of it, absolutely. We see the back of the base here, same thing, okay? And without the yoke, and I, if you only had one, you could use a, a, a GP strap. Mm -hmm. And you throw it over your shoulder. Yeah, just as a pack. Yep, yeah. this is a pack over your shoulder, and that was it. They sealed up well. They had uh, compartments in them to slide the atrovenin tablet bottle uh, vials in. Mm -hmm. Very, very, very good bag. They snapped, closed, you know, both hands, and then you rolled it up, stuffed it in, pulled the flap over, snapped on the side, lift the dots in the front. They're good bags. And uh, we'll show you know the details in the, in the markings on later. This looks like a better improvement over the Huge. first bag. Not even close, right? Yeah. Right. That was, that was like a purse. Yeah. You know? Because this you can well from you said photographs. I mean, one person or the, you know, the corpsman would carry at least one, but with this, you have two. You can fold them up. You can yeah. run them down. There's the straps to keep it tight in the front. You can wear it with the yoke. You can wear it with the GP strap. Yeah. Exactly. It was on the drill. Which is important. Mm -hmm. All that. You got more options to this. Lots of options, all right. All right. Now we'll show the, the late war bag. Okay, I'm not sure the official name of it, but I'm pretty sure they considered it the modified unit three bag. They went away, they got away from the double bag and down to a single bag. A big like, single bag. Yeah. A big single bag, yes. There's a lot of reinforcements on it. There's a lot of um, compartments inside. Compart compartmentalized, compartmentalized, thank you, mm -hmm. things better. There were small straps for putting specific pieces in. It had door gears on it. It was, a, it was a good design. And if you look at it, it resembles a 1941 knapsack. And that was by design. If you took the strap and tightened it all the way down, you could take it and strap it in under your haversack. Oh, wow. But they didn't take the haversack to combat anyway. Yeah. So they thought this would be a good idea that they had this haversack and he could just strap this to the bottom of his knapsack. Um, I have no photographic evidence of any of these, but supposedly very late war, very small issue, or supposedly war issued a little bit at the end of the war. I can't prove it. I haven't found photographs of it yet. But this is the modified Unit 3 Corman bag. When you say late war... Like what? Iwo Jima, Okinawa at the, at, at the most. Okay. You know, the 45 battles. You know, collecting wise, they're pretty rare. You know, the only one I have. Yeah, but this is in a nice condition. It's in great condition. Yeah, absolutely. When we showed up the inside part, you'll see how cool it is. You'll look, look apart. Very, yeah, very, very deep and very big compared to the first bag. And it has two separate compartments in there. I'll show it later. Yeah. It's a good bag. It's, it's no, no surprise that they went to this design. Alright, and that's the uh, Corman medical bags. Alright, let's take an in-depth look on each bag. Alright, the first bag. Okay, here's the early war Corman's, Corman's medical bag. Alright, we got the Red Cross, USN, two buckles on the front. And the guy's name. Oh yeah, on. excellent. Look at look. We see Baird, B-A-I-R-D, and we see pharmacist mate. Third slash C, third class. Isn't that cool? Yeah. His name and his rank is there. That's very cool. Nice. All right. It has an adjustable shoulder strap. Here's the buckle. 
put your pistol belt through it, you wear it on your hip. And it basically just opened, it had two snaps on the side. Really good condition too. Uh, I've actually I've seen them in great condition. The reason I've never wanted to upgrade mine is because I prefer to have this guy's name and crank on it oh, yeah, than yeah. to have some normal stock one. You can find them a lot nicer if you want. But to me, the name and rank out, outweighs any super clean one any day. Uh -huh. Well, it's in, it, it looks in it great condition. It, yeah, it is in great shape. With his uh, name. It's basically, basically just some dirt on it, really. There's no rips, tears, the snaps, and buckles all work. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And you see, you really ain't getting a lot of gear in there. And again, the majority of a Corman's bag is bandages. Mm -hmm. There will be other things, but the majority is always going to be bandages. And we'll get a nice clean look of all the bandages in a minute. All right. All right, now here's the, here's the good ones. These are, these are the unit three bags. And you see the three in the R for right, and the three in the L for left. This is a matching set. All right, and you can see this one's bigger this one's, yeah. It's the same bag. If you unsnap it here, I simply pull it out. Nice. And there you go. It's the same bag. Okay. Here's a general purpose strap if you want to not use the whole yoke system and just throw it over your shoulder. Yeah. Which is how you see most of them. You see most of that, that's all they did. They took a general purpose strap, threw this over your shoulder. You know? All right, and we'll flip the whole thing over so I can open them up. I'd say this has a lot more options as compared to the first yeah. bag. If you look down in there, there's all your atropine tablets. All right, that piece snaps in there. Okay, let's keep down in there. Lots of stuff. All right, you can see how it closed up here at both ends. Alright, same thing on this side. And then you roll it in and close it up. Keep it a oh, little more yeah. watertight, a little more sealed. And you both had the same thing. Alright, you can see this one, and I got it this way with the pins on it. And mm -hmm. I found it, the pins rolling through there, you know. These are great bags. Right, this is the same bag, just marked left and right. I don't yeah. know why they went to the trouble of doing it, you know. Organization, you could say, you know, left, know. right. I don't know, it's the same thing. They clip on the bags either way, regardless. So, that's it. All right, and again, this strap was just simply put on for the front, for yeah. For the front, hold it, keep it from flapping around on you. You know, you don't see, I don't see a lot of combat photographs. It's a little piece, it'll be hard to find, but you don't see a lot of them. Mm -hmm. All right, and here's the modified one. You see the reinforcements, the snaps on the side. Yeah. Better reinforcements yeah, on the end. Yeah, definitely. Up. Buckles in the front. And if we look, if we take the simple buckle, the simple buckle for the strap, where is it? This side over here. Okay. And we pull this all the way tight. Right? That allows you to hook it to the bottom of your have a sack. Nice. It's just like a 41 knapsack, right? Mm -hmm. It's like a two-in-one type of thing. Yeah. Well, just two-in-one and how you carried it. Yeah. Not, not, in, not in purpose, you know? All right. Again, two straps on the side, two straps on the front. Dog ears. Dog ears to help seal it up a little better. And what's in here? Now, you look in here, look, all places to put stuff. You know? Needles and files and... Iodine fits on it fits in there and you see? They add all this little stuff to the front and it's two pouches, one in the front and a bigger one in the back. And again, they're packed with bandages and everything else you might need. See the reinforcement across the back? These were good bags. Yeah. Built tough. Especially yeah. out in the field. Mmm. Well. Don't know. Probably don't built. Know. No. My guess is manufactured here in the States. Oh, okay. Alright. Another intricate part, you know, the specific intricate part of their uh, gear is the Bolo machete. It's shorter than the standard machete and a lot heavier. It's almost like a sledgehammer, it's so heavy, you know. And um, they're all marked USMC. 
Several companies made them. All right. Nasty. Oh, what do you think? Pound and a half? Two Could pounds, be. you know? I hate to be on the receiving end of that. It's a USMC <laughs> Boyd 43. Yep. Even the sheath is thick leather. You find these on a collector's market, they're always in great shape. Of course, they didn't go bad. Mm -hmm. You know, they're just so solidly built that they've all survived quite well. Right. And the purpose of the Bolo machete to a Navy corpsman was not for the ampl the amputating limbs, <laughs> but uh, to cut splints from branches, to cut makeshift uh, you know, stretcher poles. Yeah. More, most importantly, to clear an area for an aid station. Okay. All right, that was the main purpose of the Bolo machete issued to the corpsman. All right. And now we're going to give a nice in-depth of all the small pieces that are in here. All right. Okay, this is all the cool stuff in the bags. Most importantly, the tool, tool kits, so to speak. All right, we see pocket case, medical department, U.S. Navy. George Teeman and Company. I believe this was like a jewelry company. Okay. I think. Because everything in here is all stainless, you know. Oh, nice. Well, sure, for, for bacteria purposes, it would have to be. We see the forceps, and we see the scissors and the hooks. We see um, some sutures in there. Really cool part. Scalpels. Ooh, yeah, you ain't kidding. I'm even nervous to touch them sometimes. I don't like to get it out, you know? Look at that. Uh, yeah, that's... And you can see these are all marked the same as the bag, you know? U.S. Navy, yeah. yeah. You can still see the cosmoline on them. You know, to keep them. Yeah, to keep to preserve them. Yep. So this is really cool. And uh, this is one of the, this is a bigger version. Several different types are out there. This is a smaller one. Okay. Yeah, that one's smaller. Yeah. Pins, scissors, dressings, forceps, and the U.S. Navy. Slightly smaller version. When I bought the first one here. It was complete and finished. This one is not. Oh, look, this scalpel's in there too. Forceps. All right. Try not to cut yourself. <laughs> really shitting. All right, a pair of scissors. That's for us. Band-aids and sutures. So you see different types, you know? Yeah. And this one rolls up. You see the, uh, the tags. Yeah, that's, there. Cool. that's pretty cool, Case right? pin, scissors, dressings, forceps, yep. So I, I love collecting the Navy Corman stuff. Now, most of the gear they got was from the Army. But when I find specific Navy pieces, I, I like that. Oh, yeah. You know, Navy like pieces are, like, lot, rare to find lot, compared, lot yeah, higher, yeah. compared to the okay. Army pieces. Uh, the stainless steel safety pins. All right. The identification tag. I don't have the strings over them. We would basically tag the patient mm -hmm. once he came from A station to A station, you know. Pencil. Can't fill it out without that. Iodine. Let's see. I hate opening the boxes, but I'll give it a try. Here we go. Ooh. There's the iodine glasses in there. Right. Oh, wow. Very cool. Oh, I, I love collecting all the little medical stuff. This stuff is great. I wonder if they're still good. <laughs> well. Are they, do you think they're still good? Who knows? <laughs> I don't want to test I don't, Yeah, I don't want to cut myself and find out. <laughs> this is very cool. These, jo these pill tablets, pill bottles, you can find everywhere. But the find them with the atropine tablet stickers still on them is really rare. To find it full of tablets, I only have one now. Hey, hold on, let me focus this. You know, here. Oh, wait. wait. No. It had little, what color the tablets? I forget now. And this is used for malaria. Yeah, exactly. Prevent malaria. I'm not going to open it, but it's full of tablets, little yellow tablets, I believe. Yes, little yellow tablets. Used for prevention of symptoms of malaria. All right, ammonia, t ammonia. Yeah, you see, you see, like fighters and hockey players, they yeah. sniff it. You know, they keep their adrenaline running, keep guys from passing out and stuff. Wound tablets, uh, washcloth, medical department USN. I have plenty marked USMC, but never marked medical department US Navy. That's very cool. Halazone tablets for uh, purifying drinking water. Oh yeah, especially in the jungle. Oh, with, crap, uh, really? You know? Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna get a let me get a close up of this one. Yep. Alright, we'll go back this way. We have tourniquets. This is cool. It's just a rope 
with a wooden handle on it. You know, it was a, that's that's what it was. It was a, this, is, this is very late war mm -hmm. with the knob with, with the spring in it, but that's yeah. kind of odd. Tourniquet, early tourniquet. Yeah, that's a tourniquet. You know. All right. And this this is, is really cool. Actual morphine. Not even sure if it's legal. I want to be honest with you. I imagine it's still in there. I imagine it's good. I wouldn't even know. Okay. You know, I got it from a marine vet from a marine veteran actually. It was in his bag when he gave it to me. This was also in the same bag from the same man. This is what the, the plasma bottle. Oh, okay. This is a plasma bottle. You hang it open. Yeah, that's what you it. see yeah, in the Stick films. It. Yeah. Right. This is it. Now there were also glass jars. Yeah, but the glass jars would. Yes, break. But this was high. This is rubber. This is high tech. Yeah. This is late war. They started finally coming out with these. This is very cool. And if you just scan through, you'll see bandages, bandages, boric acid ointment, bandages. This is cool. Stainless steel cup eye wash. Eye wash. You, know, you get shit in your eye. You got to clean it out. Yeah. It's a stainless obviously. steel eye wash. Uh, look, ankle tape. All different size bandages from the same company. It's different size scissors. Talcum powder. Remember, uh, jungle rot was brutal. Oh. Right. This one's really cool. Foot powder marked. Medical Department, U.S. Navy. And look who made it. One of the famous perfume companies in Manhattan, you know. All right, isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is my only band. I got hundreds and hundreds of bandages, but this is the only one marked U.S. Navy. So that's pretty cool. So in the collecting world, U.S. Navies are actually hard to find. If you're there. a Corbin collector, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. This also, this the cat Boy, guts, acid. cat gut sutures. Cat guts. Yeah, it's calamarid cat gut sutures. If you look at the fine print at the bottom, it's Medical Department, U.S. Navy. Nice. These are all sealed boxes. I have several of these. These are nice. Okay. You know, and uh, for the war in the Pacific, where the Marines fought. They weren't. They had a hard enough time shipping gear across the across the Pacific Ocean. Australia contracted out a lot of stuff with them, especially some of the more simple stuff. Oh yeah, Australia's like, nearby. <laughs> that was a main base, right? Like bandages. Okay. If you look close at the bottom of these, they're marked Johnston and Johnson, Sydney, January 1943. All right. Let me focus. Okay, don't even, don't don't spend too much time on it. The next bandage is much clearer. Okay, I got it. Yep. All right, if you look at it, now you look, same thing, but it's a bigger one. Shell dressing, Commonwealth of Australia, right? Look at the bottom, look at the printing. Here it is, nice and clear. Yeah, April 1943, so, so Sydney. In, when you, if you're a Marine Corps Pacific War collector, these are cool. You know? Oh, yeah. There's a lot of them out there. They're not that rare, but again, look, large, more dressings. Yeah, let me get these guys over here first. Mm -hmm. Work acid. Hmm. All right, we have insect repellent. More bandages. Block drug, Jersey City, New Jersey. Okay. And he just goes, he just keeps going. Bandages, bandages, bandages. Ban large bandages. I like this box. I thought that was pretty cool. That one. Yeah, that, that was a good you know? find. Yeah. yeah. I tried. You were with me when I found it. Uh, what is this? More iodine. Different, in a different box, right? Different manufacturer. Yeah. Different, different, more bandages, 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 bandages. More bandages, all different types of boxes. Comp compresses, bandages, bandages. And this is pretty much what the Navy Corpsman is looking for back at the aid station. He's probably going to grab a whole box of these mm -hmm. and dump this in his bag. You know? That's a whole case. How many are in there? Ten, right? It's a rough shape, but it's intact. You know, I, yeah. Isn't that cool? Oh, Carlstad, New Jersey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's a. That should be that should be a museum piece. <laughs> Yeah, I, I didn't even notice it was a call stat, you know? Walking distance almost from here, right? Yeah. Right up, this, right up the road. Hampton Manufacturing, call stat, New Jersey. Yep. And this is a, just a quick brief 
array of all the different medical stuff that goes in those bags. Connecticut, New York, South Carolina. Yeah, Greenville, yeah. Remember, all they are is cotton bandages. Yeah, you have a con government contract, you can make some money. Newark, New Jersey. Well, yeah, I have a feeling if you get wounded or you get hurt, of course you're going to need this. You need something to stop the bleeding. All right. All right. Cool. So this is much. This is pretty much it. Or yeah. I got lots and lots of doubles, triples, quadruples of things, but okay. this is a good array of just what's in it. And what do you see, really? We see bandages, we see sutures, we see uh, boric acid, we see iodine. That's about it, really. Nice.